Hello everybody, I'm Mike Dicely. Today we're going to show you how to square your chassis using the Hyper Racing Deluxe Chassis Squaring Kit. The idea behind the design of this is first and foremost to make it simple, fast, and easy for you to set up your car. And you can do it with just one person. That's what makes it so unique. You don't need to call your buddies over. Uh, you can do it all on your own. Uh, the other idea behind this kit is that it enables you to use different block heights to simulate race uh, ride heights and race conditions so that you can actually square your car up just as though it were on the racetrack. And uh, that's totally different than the way we used to square the chassis up. So when do we do when do we do this procedure to our car? We definitely do it before the start of the season. Uh, it gives you a baseline, a very repeatable way uh, to get your car exactly the same condition each time. Um, when you're involved in a bad accident, you want to run yourself through this whole procedure again. Uh, and uh, myself, I probably do it like every three weeks. You know, if everything's going normal, about every three races. Um, Again, it only takes like 10, 15 minutes to do the procedure, so it's not like a huge time investment. Uh, very simple, very easy. You can get our chassis kit, squaring kit online, and next to the product detail page, there's a PDF instruction showing you exactly the procedure that we go through, that we're gonna walk you through here today. It has the suggested block heights that we're gonna use, and uh, what we recommend that you start with. As time goes on and you wanna experiment with different ride heights, uh, Again, racing is an individual sport. We recommend creativity. We encourage it. First, make sure you have a pretty level surface to work off of. Although it's not really critical, it will change things just a little bit. Then you want to jack up the front of the car so that we can take the front wheels off in order to put on the front toe plates. The toe plates are used to set the toe as well as square the front axle to the rear axle. Then we're going to take the load off of all the springs on the car. You want to unscrew the coil nuts off the front. For torsion cars, remove the front torsion stops. With the included setup blocks, you're going to set two of them for two and a quarter inches and two of them for three and a quarter inches. The two and a quarter inch blocks will go under the left side of the car, the three and a quarter inch blocks under the right side of the car. Then you are going to set the car down onto the blocks with the blocks placed approximately under the axle. Unhook the rear shocks, jack up the rear of the car, remove the wheels, and slide on our gold rear axle spacers, which are available for both 2 inch and inch and 3 quarter rear axles. Get out the rear squaring blocks. The small one is for the left rear, the large one for the right rear. Place them under the spacers with the tall side of the block facing the rear of the car. With the setup blocks under the frame, about under the rear axle, lower the car down onto the setup blocks and the rear axle onto the squaring blocks. With the panhard bar cars, set the rear panhard bar height to 6 inches from the top of the bottom frame rail to the center of the rod end. Now we are going to set the bearing carrier timing. All of our bird cages come with bubble levels. To set the bearing carrier timing, adjust the top and the bottom rod ends on the wishbones until the bubble is in the center of the bubble level. Do this for the right and the left side of the car. Make sure the rear shackles are close to being in the center of the bearing carriers. To adjust this, you can adjust the rear panhard bar side to side, or the Jacob's Ladder rod end that goes into the bearing carrier, adjust that in or out. If the shackle is in the center of one of the bearing carriers, but not in the other, you may need to either move the bearing carrier on the axle by swapping spacers around or bend the rear torsion arms. For the panhard bar cars, measure the distance between the panhard bar clevis and the frame. This distance should be about a half inch. Adjust the front of the wishbone until you achieve this measurement. Insert the squaring rod into the left rear hollow 7 8 torsion bar. Let the squaring rod stick out more on the right rear and measure the distance from the back of the squaring block to the edge of the squaring rod. Write this measurement down. Now slide the rod through the torsion bar over to the left side of the car and measure the distance from the left side squaring block to the edge of the squaring rod. 
these two numbers need to be the same. Adjust the rod end on the front of the wishbone in or out so that you will make both measurements the same. For the Jacob's Ladder cars, we want to make sure the Jacob's Ladder is in the middle of its free play. You may need to adjust both wishbones in or out in order to achieve this. With the rear axle square, you want to now check your chain alignment. Put a straight edge on the rear sprocket carrier and align it with the front sprocket of the engine. Add or take away spacers between the sprocket carrier and the bearing carrier in order to get the rear sprocket carrier to align with the front sprocket. Next we are going to set the kingpin angle. This is done by setting an angle finder on top of the steering arm. For regular steering, this measurement should be about 8 to 10 degrees. More kingpin angle makes the car want to hold a straighter line, but it also makes the car much harder to steer. 10 to 12 degrees is the maximum we would recommend. However, for power steering, we often run 15 to 20 degrees, generally starting at 17 degrees. Adjust the top and the bottom rod end on the right side of the car in order to achieve the angle you would like. Rough measure the front axle offset by measuring from the bottom frame rail to the wheel mounting face on the left and the right side of the car. Adjust the front panhard bar until the right side offset is one inch larger than the left. With the rear axle square, now we are going to square up the front axle to the rear axle. This is achieved simply by hooking your tape measure onto the rear squaring block as shown and measure to the center line edge of the toe plate on the front of the car. Write this measurement down and do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the car. These two numbers should be the same. Adjust the left side radius rod or adjust the right side radius rods in or out in order to make these two numbers the same. If you adjust the right side, make sure you turn the top and the bottom radius rod the same amount in order to keep the kingpin angle the same. On the 07 and up Hyper 600s, this number should be between 62 and 63 inches. To set the toe, turn the front wheels until they are about straight. Then measure from one toe plate over to the edge of the other toe plate. Do this in the front and the rear of the toe plates. The rear measurement should be about a sixteenth of an inch smaller than the front measurement. This will give you a slight bit of toe out. To adjust this, simply loosen up the jam nuts on the steering rods and adjust them in or out. The axles are now square. You can put your wheels and tires back on the car, set the car on the ground, and double check your front offset. If it is not the offset you are looking for, adjust the front panhard bar side to side to achieve the offset you need. If you have to adjust the axle by more than about a half inch, you're going to have to re-square the axles. Shifting the axle side to side will change its squareness. That does it for this video. Now go get your car square and get hyper.